Yeah, according to Mark Gurman over at Bloomberg, uh, there have been a lot of issues with this iPad Pro for whatever reason. And it, it's still so unclear what iPad Pro redesign means. Like, there's that term that keeps get throwing around, um, iPad Pro redesign, a redesign is coming. We still exactly. don't know what that means. Um, but what we have heard, again, from Dylan DKT, who has a pretty accurate track record, is that the 11-inch iPad Pro will get mini LED this year. So that yeah, is something to look forward exciting. to. So that's really cool. Yeah, and, you know, what do you think? If, if it was... Well, on one hand, obviously, you're still going to be able to charge this iPad with USB-C. So the way that we've been doing it for all of us that have the iPad Pro, it's not going to change. If they do add wireless charging, is that something that you really care about? Especially if it's like only MagSafe. Is that something? I mean, for me, no, I don't have a problem just plugging it in. I don't know what the rush and the need to have wireless charging on the ipad pro is i mean it's such a big device especially the 12.9 inch especially even the 11 inch it's so big that i don't know who's asking for wireless charging on the ipad pro unless this is sort of the theory that apple's going to start with the ipad pro and test this out and then remove the port and like this would be the first portless uh, device that Apple could release. I, yeah, which it is doesn't possible. make a whole lot of sense to me, I guess. And then you know you got the M2 processor inside, Mini LED. That's nice to see. But what else can Apple do, and what else are they really going to do? I mean, it's still I mean, it's a yeah. it's a good device as it is. Maybe better battery life. I think was one of the other rumors. But um, that makes sense, yeah. what else? What else are they going to do? Well, I don't. There's no rumors about this. But what I would love for them to do instead of making me use MagSafe from the iPhone. Just give me MagSafe from the MacBook Pro, plenty thin. Mm. That there's no way that wouldn't fit on the edge of the uh, iPad Pro. I, th- I I think it would fit. Um, and then that way you, I mean, it's basically it's same same idea, right? You're still charging, um, but you know you get that more laptop like experience, which clearly Apple's trying to push with the iPad. So I, I'd rather see that. Like, what? That's something that's so confusing with the iPad. The more I think about it, it's like. One one month, Apple is clearly pushing this as a quote-unquote Mac replacement. And then the next month, they're like, well, it's basically just a bigger iPad or iPhone. Mm. Like, they can't seem to settle on a direction. Like, if it's going to be a laptop replacement, then let's just go all in. Let's give us all the desktop-like things. Like, maybe there should be two USB-C ports, or maybe you should add MagSafe from the MacBook Pro on there. But then at this, on the other hand, they're like, well, it's just going to run iOS, and it's not going to have any of the cool features that we want. So it's like, I just wish... We say this every single time we talk about the iPad, but I want them to choose a direction and really go for it instead of just teasing us every time. I mean, with the M2 processor inside, with that USB-C port that's Thunderbolt now, the great display, there's no limiting factor here in terms of hardware. It's just a software limitation. It's just Apple, for whatever reason, not allowing you to run Final Cut or Logic or full-fledged Mac apps on the iPad Pro. And it's funny because to your point, Matt, there was this whole era for like a couple of years that it was, what's a computer? iPad yeah. Pro, iPad's your replacement to the computer. And maybe that was because it could be argued the Mac line was sort of stagnating and they weren't giving it a whole lot of attention and people were sort of criticizing it. And that was sort of Apple's focus was iPad, iPad, iPad. But now with sort of the resurgence of the Mac and all this time being put into it, are they worried they're going to cannibalize Mac sales by people buying iPads instead of Macs? I don't think that's the case. Again, these are so um, complementary devices that it'd be nice to sort of do different things on different devices. But it is confusing when you sort of tout it one day that it's a computer replacement, then it's not. Then you put the M2 processor in there that's super powerful, but you don't really have apps to utilize it. It's just confusing. So I don't know um, sort of what this new era of the iPad Pro is. I mean, that redesign in 2018 definitely set a standard that Apple cares about the iPad Pro. They see this as a pro device. This is sort of their flagship tablet moving forward. And it's sort of now in 2021, or I guess now 2022, sort of four years, three, four years later, four years later. Wow. Um, Where do we go? What is the next uh, chapter in the iPad Pro story, even the iPad in general, what is the next chapter in that story? And it just seems unclear as of right now. Hopefully, Apple has a plan because uh, it doesn't seem like they have uh, a clear plan, at least to us on the outside. Yeah. And I keep thinking, like, I keep racking my brain besides the wireless charging, what else are they going to do on the hardware side? And that, I don't know. And honestly, I don't care. I love the hardware. The hardware is perfectly fine with me. It's the uh, software experience. So it's like, 
let's just not worry about the hardware for <laughs> now. You're already updating the chip. That's fine. That's great. But let's just let's work on the software. We'll uh, again. We say this every time, but I think this WWDC maybe we'll get a hint at what they are doing. But eh, who knows? Hey, you. Thank you very much for watching this clip from the Apple Circle podcast. If you want to check out the full episode, hit one of those videos right here. And also hit the other surprise video to see a surprise clip from the Apple Circle podcast. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and subscribe to the Apple Circle audio feeds and on all your favorite podcast platforms linked down below. And of course, if you haven't already, subscribe to the main Apple Circle YouTube channel linked right down below.